For the Unit 1 Airplane Challenge, you've downloaded the package file. Now I'm going to right click on Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and you should have extracted the challenge uh, starter files already. Then you just double click on this, Import, and now you'll have a brand new folder that has its own scripts uh, and all that fun stuff. So in Challenge 1, I'm going to the Challenge 1 scene. There's my airplane. And in here, I'm going to open up uh, actually both of these scripts. I'm just going to highlight them both and hit enter. Now, if we look at the actual assignment, uh, number three, make the plane go forward. To do that, we're going to go to our player controller X script. And you can see every frame here, it's telling it to tra transform.translate, which is like kind of sliding in a direction, but it's saying back. We just need that to say forward. And then number four, the plane's going too fast. Slow the plane down. So a couple of ways to do this. Um, one is we could modify the speed. However, part of the problem is your computer speed is going to kind of dictate how fast it goes. Um, unless you multiply this by time dot delta time, which will normalize the speed. So you could go to Unity and play with the player uh, speed and make it like one or even less than that. Um, but what I found was more controllable was to multiply by time dot delta time. And now when I go back and actually play it, and we'll hit play once much more manageable by the way you can actually hit pause and then play and it'll go one frame and then you could advance through every frame so it's going much slower and you can still adjust the speed then now the plane's kind of going in circles but we all, we want it to respond to the user input um, so if we go back here to our player controller X you can see the transform dot rotate is rotating this direction times the speed times time dot delta time but it's never listening for the vertical input which we get here well we declare it there and then it it gets it here so then we just need to multiply it by that so times vertical tab key autocomplete love that and now it should respond to that. And the values of this can only be negative 1, 0, or 1, or anywhere in between. So it'll always multiply by, you know, negative 1 times the speed, or 1 times the speed, which is what makes it go up or down. So, compiling, let's play, make sure I click in the game window. Good, now I can control it with my up and down arrow keys or the W and S keys. Now the camera's not where it needs to be, so um, you can manually move it. So if I go to main camera here, and I see down here it's looking straight on at the plane. If I scrub this value, I know I want it to be basically looking that way. And these are gonna be in 90 degree increments. So the closest 90 degree increment is gonna be 270, which looks about right. Um, and then if I move it over here to where the plane's at, I'm basically writing on the wheel there, um, but I want to be kind of back a little, maybe even in front of it, so I can kind of round these numbers off as I think I did 30, 0, 10. And if I hit play, it's not going to follow it, but it is much better looking. Next, number seven, the camera's not following the plane. Um, if we go back here, we go to the main camera, you can see in the script, it has a variable for the game object of plane, but it's not actually in there. So we'll just drop that in there, hit play. And now it's kind of crazy because it's like writing right on the wheel because it thinks it wants to be right at the player there. So some change in the follow player X needs to be made. If we open that script, we can see there is a vector three offset and then it actually uses it and says this camera's position should be the same as the plane's position plus the offset. But we never told it what the offset was. Well, 
remember we told it earlier I rounded off those numbers as the 30 0 10 for XYZ um, that's actually a good offset so I can say not only declare the variable but initialize the variable with a value and say equals and you have to tell it hey this is a new vector 3 and then in parentheses I'm gonna give it those three numbers I did before save so now it's going to use the offset of this in addition to it so I shouldn't be writing right on the airplane wheel it should stay to this offset that I see when I start and there we go now the propeller is not turning so we're gonna make a brand new script and call it uh, propeller spin X and then open that up because we're gonna drop this right onto the propeller now since this script is gonna go right on the propeller all we really need is a speed to rotate at that we can mess with in the inspector in unity but then we can um, just rotate itself in the update so we're gonna do a public um, float rotate speed and then we'll give that a value in the inspector and then in the update all we want to do is change the rotation of the transform so instead of transform.position we want transform.rotate when you do that all you're really saying is if I go to the propeller here there's transform dot and then position or transform dot rotation transform dot scale and you can modify all those values through code that way so I want to mess with the rotation so transform dot rotation rotate sorry um, is going to be from its perspective vector 3 dot is going to be forward um, multiplied by our speed of course rotate speed and to normalize it make it much more controllable time dot delta time and now if we go into unity uh, the script is not even on the propeller so I could drag it onto here or I'll go over here and drop it or say add component and start typing in the name of the script I like just dropping it right on there and there it is the rotate speed is currently zero let's try out 50 and this is where using play mode to play with the the versions there I'm gonna hold shift right click it's going really slow um, so this is where I might say okay how about 300 and now I can see it's a little faster how about 600 that look, looks pretty good of course when I hit play that value goes away but I modified it in play mode so I could watch it happen so I could pick a good value so I'm gonna go with 600 and now the game is finished we don't have any scorekeeping or anything but that would be a good challenge too so we so hopefully this uh, helps someone